Hello, random people. Welcome to Random Garage, the channel where we're always doing something. <laughs> Today on Random Garage, we have the assembly portion of the 2017 Dyna Wide Glide project, which is a uh, cams install and installing some gold engine pieces. I've already got the new inner cam bearings installed. I made a short video on that which I'll link below. For starters here, we're gonna take the old cams out of the chain. And insert the new cams. You wanna keep the chain in the same orientation as it was originally, because uh, it's possible it could give you more service life just to keep it going in the same direction for its whole life. So we'll put the two cams in and make sure the uh, of course, that the timing marks are lined up. There's the timing mark on that one, so get this one oriented and in the chain so that they're nailed it on the first try. Next is to put assembly lube on the bearing surfaces and then drop the camshafts into the support plate. Now that I have those in, I'll put their correct shims back on. The thick one goes on the rear cam, the thin one on the front cam, and then uh, we don't reuse that snap ring, use a brand new one. So then install the secondary tensioner here and tighten the screws to between 90 and 120 inch pounds. Now continuing with the cam install, I've pulled the oil pump out to install a new O-ring there on the back and installed new O-rings right there and right there in the engine case. Then I'll just slide the oil pump right back in. So next I'll put some assembly lube on these bearing surfaces and in the needle bearings inside the case and then uh, reinsert the cam plate assembly and uh, probably tap it with the rubber mallet to get it to seat properly over the dowels here. Okay, so I've got my 10 bolts for the cam support plate, six that hold the plate to the engine case and four that hold the oil pump to the plate. They're all the same bolt. Uh, I cleaned them up real good so that there's no oil on the threads anymore because oily threads screw up your uh, torque value. So you'd probably, you'd likely end up over tightening them if you use the manual's torque value with oily threads. So they're nice and clean. I'm going to first install the six cam plate screws. So I have them started and then uh, as I tighten the bolts they get tightened and torqued in a specific sequence. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now as I tighten them down I'm going to continually rotate the rear wheel to make the crankshaft rotate to help the plate center up and kind of find its natural home. Then we torque those screws to between 90 and 120 inch pounds. Now with the oil pump screws started, I'm going to alternately tighten number one and number two while rotating the crankshaft to get the oil pump to center up. And then once they're snug, then I'll snug up three and four and then torque them in sequence. One, two, three, four. First of all, between 40 and 45 foot pounds and then go around them again and do them between one between 90 and 120 inch pounds. Now to check rear cam end play adjustment, I've reinstalled both the, both the sprockets just without the chain uh, with their bolts. I've got the timing marks lined up. Then I'm going to put the sprocket locking tool back in there and then torque both of these bolts to 15 foot pounds. Then I'm going to push both sprockets inward to eliminate any end play and then lay a straight edge across them and if it doesn't fit flat, if there's like a gap underneath, like a gap like that on either one, and if the gap is greater than 0 0.01 inch, which you got to measure with a feeler gauge, if it's, if it's less than 0 0.01 inch, then no adjustment is necessary. Now these measure perfect because S&S makes some really good products. These are S&S. MR103C cams. So they're perfect, but if it wasn't, in that case then, have to get shims that go behind this sprocket 
in order to level them out and bring them within spec. Okay, so now I've reassembled the sprockets on there with the chain this time, making sure, of course, the timing marks are lined up. Uh, my bolts are nice and clean, and then put a little engine oil under the bolt head of each one, and then some red high strength Loctite on the threads. Then I'll put my cam locking tool back in there and tighten this bolt to 25 foot pounds and this one to 34 foot pounds. Then I'll reinstall the chain tensioner and tighten its screws between 90 and 120 inch pounds and uh, put some blue Loctite on them. Now I've got my cam cover bolts cleaned up and set up with a little bit of blue Loctite. Uh, gasket surface is cleaned up so I'll make sure the inside of the cam cover is clean and install it with a new gasket and those bolts get torqued in a certain sequence um, here's the sequence and they get torqued between 125 and 155 inch pounds next I'm going to drop these lifters back in their holes and put their little keeper bars in place put them in the same holes they came out of facing the same direction and one of the lifters is high up sitting on the cam lobe so I'll just rotate the rear tire to bring it down so that they're all bottomed out now I'm installing these new lifter covers with new gaskets of course and uh, the screws I'm not putting any Loctite on because I've seen too many cases of people breaking them trying to get them out anyway I don't think that they need Loctite but they do get torqued between 90 and 120 inch pounds and they should be tightened and torqued in a crosswise pattern so not going around just keep crossing over so I put new o-rings here on the top of the tappet covers and I think next I'm going to install the pushrod covers and I've got to get up here in the bottom side of the head and peel these o-rings out and put new ones up in there so I'll assemble each pushrod tube they go in this order so two a little through the collar the spring goes on there this uh, brass washer thing brand new o-ring and then it goes into the bottom tube then to assemble them they go in the bottom first pushed into that o-ring and then slide the top up push it up into its o-ring get that spring collar to come down then installing this keeper is a little tricky you gotta push it all the way up to the top get a screwdriver in there to push down on that collar with the spring under it and at the same time push in on that keeper kind of work it It'll eventually snap and it's in place got to clean up these head surfaces of course get the all the old gasket material off of there very carefully though so as not to scar the aluminum so bad that it'll cause a future oil leak through the gaskets now that I've got the head top surface cleaned up I'm gonna go ahead and drop these push rods back in their holes uh, these MR 103 cams are a bolt-in cam which means they can use all the stock components like the stock push rods stock valve springs uh, they have the same base circle as a stock cam so don't need adjustable push rods can just use the stock ones and it's gonna work out perfectly Okay, next is the rocker boxes. Got the rocker box gaskets on here. They don't take any sealer, but I put a couple dabs of gasket maker in about six spots just to hold them in place so they'd stay located. Rocker boxes are set up with new O-rings. All the bolts are clean and dry. A couple drops of blue Loctite on them. And the rear lock rocker box needs to be installed with these two bolts in place because you can't get them in after the box is in place. So with the rocker boxes on and the six bolts loosely in, tighten them down snug and then torque them 120 to 168 inch pounds. But there's a sequence for that too. 
is what it looks like on the front cylinder you start on the inside one two three four five six and on the rear cylinder you start on the inside so you're going inside out one two three four five six okay so the breather assemblies we've got the parts all cleaned up with the old gasket scraped off them they sit in the middle of the rocker box assembly i put a little bit of uh just a fingerprints of gasket maker there to make the gasket stick the two gaskets are slightly different this one's kind of triangular and it kind of then holds the foam in place and this round one here with the round center that goes right there in the rocker assembly and you take this plate pull a new, a new umbrella valve through it there put on the sponge thing put on that triangular gasket because that it kind of holds the sponge in place and then the top cover get it all lined up and on there there it's in place so all the bolts are clean and dry set up with some blue loctite on them the larger bolts are going in these four holes on each rocker assembly and the two smaller bolts go down there through the breather now we'll take the rocker assembly and put it in place in the rocker box on this rear cylinder you have to slide it in with two bolts in place otherwise after you put it in the frames in the way you can't get those bolts in we'll get it in position make sure the tops of the push rods are in the little uh, half circle things on the underside of the arms there and then uh, just get all the bolts started so then we're going to tighten these big bolts 18 to 22 foot pounds and uh, in the sequence of that one there first and this one second and this one third and this one fourth and on the front cylinder this is the first one and then number two, number three, number four. And then we can tighten the breather screws there between 120 and 156 inch pounds. And then finally the rocker box covers. Got a few little dabs of uh, gasket sealer on there just to make it sticky so that uh, put the gasket on there it'll stay in place. Okay, there's the gasket in place. And now for the rocker box covers. There's two different length screws. The long screws go on the right side of the bike and the short screws go on the left side because the rocker box cover has offset dimensions to it and they go that way. So the long screws obviously go through the longer side. So I have them set up, a little bit of blue Loctite on them. So just set the rocker cover in place and then get the screws started. Now with all the rocker cover screws snugged up, they get torqued 15 to 18 foot pounds in a specific sequence. On the back cylinder, it's one center left, two, three, four, five, six, and it's opposite on the front cylinder. One center left, two, three over there, four, five over there, and then six. Well, that's it. Just got to reinstall the exhaust and uh, put the fuel tank back in place and it's done. Oh yeah, and put a new calibration in it, but I'll leave that for another video. If you want to see more random garage things, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you get a random notification when a new random garage video is posted. Thanks for watching another episode of Random Garage here in Sturgis. And remember, whatever you do, make sure you're always doing something.